talk about big data. And so the question I'm going to do is why big data? What are the different terms? What are the key technologies and databases? So now here is the thing. This particular lecture module is nothing about networking at all. Big data is actually databases. Okay? So this module is about databases. The next module is about networking. Alright? I cannot talk about networking until you understand the databases. Understand? And therefore, this is why it is called Big Data Fundamentals is because we just want you to understand when I say SQL or SQL or Apache, Hadoop, this and that, you understand those terms. So this is that, right? So types of databases. And much of this is available in this book, which is designed for all of us, Big Data for Dummies. All right? However, <laughs> there are many other books. All right, so what is Big Data? Data is measured by three dimensions. Volume, three Vs. Volume, how many terabytes is it? If it is big, then it is big data. Velocity, how fast does it change? Right, terabytes per second. So if it changes very fast, then it is big data. Variety, what kind of data is it? Is it fixed? Is it text, audio, video, images, spatial, or mixed? The more problem there is, bigger problem it is, and then it becomes a big data problem. So these things were all there before, but previously the volume was very limited, the velocity was very limited, and the variety was very limited because if it became out of our bind, bound or out of our capacity to buy or to analyze, we said forget it, we are not going to analyze it, we throw away the data. But now, what has happened is, we have computers which are cheap, we have storage which are cheap, and we have networking which are cheap, and therefore, we, uh, we are increasing the bounds of these three dimensions. Now, these three Vs were, these are old. I mean, this is not something that they discovered yesterday that we need to measure by three, three Vs. When you think about it, they missed several things in here. First thing is location. So they never thought about that somebody would be analyzing data which is located in China, India, Japan, Korea, and USA at the same time. Right? That is not indicated by any, any of those three Bs. So location is important, right? And churn. Churn is basically um, to do with um, somewhat related to variety and velocity, but um, velocity in kind of indicates how often the data comes in and churn is how often the data gets out of date. And so that is churn is change and then veracity. Veracity is accuracy. It's, the data is very noisy. Alright? So it's not perfect data. So how accurate it is, that also affects. Accuracy, correctness, applicability, all of those are put into this one week. So if you really think about it, the problem is bigger than three Vs. And the examples of the data that we can analyze today that we could not analyze few years ago are social network data, who is connected to whom, what you are interested in, and so on and so forth. Sensor network data. So there are hundreds of sensors in the car, but you don't see any of those data because we just can't keep them, we cannot use them, do anything with them, right? But the next car that you buy probably will have all of that available for you and for the, for the manufacturer. And so, so, so that is sensor network data. Internet search data. Obviously before, before um, <coughs> Google, nobody knew how much information there is in the world. And now Google can analyze, if Google can analyze the whole world's web pages, then obviously the big data problem they have solved already. Right? So that is search data. Genomics. And you heard about genome projects and things like that. Astronomy. The data coming from the sky. All of this previously was not analyzed and not analyzed to the extent that we can do today. So these are all examples of big data problems. And in fact, I will see some more examples. But the question is why we are we doing our big data now? Well, there are 10 reasons why we are doing it now. First is, cost is low. 
Previously, we could not store a terabyte of data. By the way, I have a disk, which I, a big disk, which is my first computer. It was 8 megabyte. Today, you won't even think about what is 8 megabyte. You won't even have a USB with 8 megabyte. You can't even buy 8 megabyte disk anymore. But <laughs> that is how big the disk was. 8 megabyte. And then we went to gigabyte and we felt it was too big. You know, and then we went to 100 gigabyte and now I carry 2 terabyte in my pocket. Right? And um, so, petabyte is is common, right, for the companies. Terabyte is common for the people. So the cost of storage has gone so low that you can store anything that you, you didn't want to even keep it, okay? So there's a lot of getting stored. Powerful multi-core processors. Computing is cheap. Low latency possible by distributed computing. So compute clusters and grids connected to high-speed networks. Now we don't just need one computer. We can use hundreds of computers together at the same time. Virtualization. And with virtualization, we can get, we can partition the resources if we have too big. If we have too small, we can make it big. We can isolate it <laughs> and dynamically change it. And so we can change it in any dimension. Affordable storage computing with minimal manpower via clouds. Second thing is the manpower was expensive before. Now you don't need manpower because you can just give it to the cloud. Okay. And the clouds are all automated. All right, so possible because of the advances in networking, now cloud, cloud is one reason. Better understanding of task distribution. So this is something that we will learn in this lecture, what happened to the ability to analyze all these things, and that is MapReduce and Hadoop. These things we didn't know before how to analyze big data. Now we know. Advanced analytical techniques. Mathematically also we made sense with machine learning, for example. Before we didn't have those techniques. Big data platforms. So we have now cloud providers such as Amazon. They provide everything that you need to analyze. So even if you didn't want to learn anything about big data, you could just give it to Amazon. Not only they provide cloud, they provide big data analysis. So they will do everything. They will do Hadoop, MapReduce, everything for you. So nowadays you can just contact out cheap. So, for example, um, Amazon Web Services provided elastic map reduce, simple ser storage service for storage, and edge base for database, which is a column-oriented database. Google provides BigQuery and prediction APIs and so on and so forth. So, all of this is available easily. Open source software is, is the ninth reason. Is that nowadays you can get OpenStack, for example, which is the cloud computing software, or Postgres SQL, which is a database, all for free, all open source. All right? But the most important reason is the tenth one, because there is so much money in it. Last year, Obama announced $200 million for big data research. So suddenly, all the professors are working on big data, including me. Right? When $200 million is there, you know, we don't want to work on any other problem. <laughs> right? And $200 million was given to NSF, NIH, DOE, DOD, DARPA, and USCS. So any, anywhere, any, you can get funding, it is in, you know, is there for, for big data research. So whether you are doing networking, whether you are doing computing, whether you are doing programming, whether you are doing biology, everybody is working on big data. Okay, so now big data is used even for things that you would not have thought before, such as monitoring premature inf infants. So when a baby is born in the hospital, they put some sensors on them and the machine, you know, just wiggles around and somebody has to see. Sometimes it says beep, 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 beep. But now we can record the whole thing. We can analyze it. And we can, you know, before something happens, before it beeps, we can tell the, oh, this is a problem, you know, take care of it. So. So that is one thing. Predict machine failures in manufacturing. So before the machine breaks, we will know months in advance that this is about to break. Predict traffic jams. So before the traffic jam happens, you know, they, they have these things which can monitor the traffic, cars and movement and everything at speed. They can analyze it at high speed. And so they can tell you, please don't take 360 or don't take 64 and, you know, go this way. Save fuel and reduce pollution. So every company, every enterprise is looking for 
use a big, big data because it is so possible now. I mean, in fact, you buy one thing from Amazon and then they analyze right away. What are the other things that you looked at and they send you a recommendation. Big data. Same thing, Facebook, whatever you do, every single move is being monitored and you get a recommendation. You know, and every vendor, same thing. All right, now databases. So first thing when you go to database class, they teach you is that all the transactions have to be acid. Acid stands for A for atomicity, C for consistency, I for isolation, and D for durability. Atomicity, that you don't want to do a transaction halfway. It's like this, suppose you, you pay and you get a ticket, movie ticket. That's one transaction, right? Suppose you paid and then the machine failed. Would you be very happy <laughs> that you didn't get the ticket, but the machine took from your credit card the money, right? So you really want it to be atomic in the sense that if, if they took the money, they should give the ticket. If they didn't give the ticket, they should not take the money. So the whole thing is just one thing, one atom. You cannot divide an atom. Now you can, but in, you know, when the bird was said, at time you can't divide the atom. So, so the thing is, all the transactions have to be atomic, right? Zero or one. You cannot have half of a transaction. Consistency. <clears throat> that basically it should be correct. If, if something is incorrect, then it will not affect the database. And the data goes from one valid state to another valid state. And that means whatever the validity means. Okay? So somebody cannot write things, you know, for example, if the balance are supposed to be dollars, somebody cannot write it in pennies, or if they're supposed to be in US dollars, this person somebody cannot write it in Chinese, and so on and so forth, right? RMBs. So the idea is they have to, the, the, whoever has the database defines some validity rules, and those validity rules have to be satisfied at all the times. Isolation. Multiple parallel transactions will not interfere with each other. So transactions are getting done all the time. When you have a database, there is not one user, there are hundreds of users. Right? And one user should not really affect, I mean, it, it will affect in some sense, but it will not really interfere with each other as much as possible. Here's the thing, I mean, suppose there is only one seat and two people try to get it, one will get it. And so this will affect the other guy for sure. But that is an expected, up, expected outcome. Right? If both got it, that will be a problem. So, so other than that, there should not be interference of any kind. Durability. And once it is done, it is done forever. So if the output is written to database, it stays there forever, even after the power loss, crashes, and errors. So you, you bought the ticket. Now if you go to the theater and they sorry, 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 the machine crashed and we lost the whole thing, you would not be very happy. So you want that to be there forever. Those are the four things. Acid. Atomicity, consistency, isolation, durability, and the database people go to a great extent to check that their database satisfies these requirements. And in particular, there was one variety of databases which became very popular, and this actually started at the time when I was in PhD, PhD student, relational databases, 30 years ago. Relational databases, they provide acid, acid and then there were some databases that really didn't want to stick with acid because acid means that you would be sacrificing something else. So they invented a new name called base. <laughs> All right, you know the acid and the base. Acid is acidic and base is alkaline. So <laughs> base stands for basically available, soft and eventual, cons eventual consistency. All right, B A S E. Basically available, soft, and eventual consistency. Because with base, you don't have to work very hard. Yes, there are some errors. Sometimes there is an error. For example, here's thing you do on Amazon: you go and buy something, put it into the cart, and you say, "Now go and give my card to me, sell to me." Say, oh, "There's nothing in the cart." You just put a minute ago, and then what happened to my card? It happens in Amazon. I have, it happens to me many, many times. But they are not following acid; they are following base. So it's basically it doesn't happen, but sometimes it happens, right? 
and uh, if there is you make a hydrogen number call and it is taken care of all right they will look it up it may not be atomic i made the payment but didn't get the book okay <laughs> so there is an 800 number for that so for them acidity is acid is not a good I mean, acid is actually too much to pay for so they have base so everybody understand the pun base and acid basically they are opposite of each other base people do not care for the acid because acid requires too much work particularly if you have a global database lots of things happening in parallel now the data itself is of many different kinds first is structured data structured data is one that has a preset format say for example your outlook contact book every record in that one has a name has a company has a home phone number right but look at your web page and my web page they are not structured yes there is an structure everybody has a head and a body but beyond that you know you can't really find an structure beyond that right so that is unstructured so structured is something that everybody has the same format all the records in the database address books product catalogs banking transactions your checkbook these are all structured databases unstructured are movies audio text file web pages computer programs social media these are not structured semi structured which is half by between <coughs> and um, so for example you could take web pages and classify them into structured okay web page and then this is of whatever that is right categories you put into them so 80% of the world data is unstructured that means most of it is unstructured and so you have to worry about how to and how to do anything with the unstructured data and that was a big problem and basically in the beginning most of the data relational databases for example are designed only for structured data all right then there is a batch data and the streaming data batch data is data that you know is is comes and then you can keep it forever St streaming data is keeps coming you know your sensor data is streaming you know you have some data and then one minute later you have more data and then one minute later you have more data that is streaming right real time some data is real time <laughs> and some is not real time means you have to really use it as it is coming otherwise no good intrusion detection for example if there is an intrusion you want to know it now and not tomorrow right if there is going to be an accident you want to know it now not tomorrow you know same thing for the other examples we had before where failures things like that so those are real time in in some sense that you want to know them in time this is also known as data in motion so there is a data in motion and there is data at rest so data at rest is more like data which you know can be analyzed any time we can analyze tomorrow and makes no difference data in motion has to be analyzed right now or data at rest next time non real time data at rest sales analysis for example you could analyze sit down and analyze in the night as to what was sold and what we need to order all right that would be rest metadata metadata is basically the definitions of the data the mappings of the data or the schemes of the data so data itself is data and then any things about it is called metadata for example if i have a class i will have everybody's name phone number things like that so those fields will be called metadata metadata includes name phone number and so on so forth but actual names is a data 